Today we're going to look at the basics of reading and writing to a file on the node server. So in this example, we'll store the names of users in a file uh, in JSON format. So in general, this is not sort of an efficient way to do this type of thing, and we would normally use a database, and we will be getting to that in the next week or so. Uh, but for now, we're going to look at uh, being able to read and write um, some username information uh, to a file on the node server. So let's have a look at the JSON file that we'll be saving our information into. Um, so it's just going to have a number of records in here, um, each storing a different name. So to get our app going first, we need to run our terminal commands. So we'd create a new directory and inside that run npm in it. Um, it will ask us a series of questions when we get to the option for an entry point. Change that to server.js. Uh, we'll then want to install Express. Uh, this will, gives us access to routing on our node um, application. And we use the save option um, to save it to uh, this as a dependency to our package.json file. Um, if we wanted to be able to then give this code then to someone else, we wouldn't have to give it with the node underscore modules folder um, that gets created when you install an express package. Um, so all we need to do is take the, the, the main files without the node underscore modules. And if you run that in a directory with npm install, it will install the app with all the dependencies and download them um, on the fly ready to go. So we'll be creating a number of files in here our main file, which we set as the entry point, is our server.js. We'll create two routes. One to is auth.js, which is basically a login, just comparing a username um, against a known uh, list of usernames in the back end. And we have a register function where we can add a new name to the back end. Um, the listen.js function will basically just be initializing our uh, HTTP service on port 3000, and we've already seen the authdata.json file. So let's have a quick look. So you'll see the file structure that we've got here. We've got our server.js, listen.js, our authdata.json file, and in our routes directory, our two routes. Let's have a look at the auth.js. So this is where we want to log in and compare usernames. Uh, so we're going to create here a route going to a GET request. So a GET request does not need data to come from the body of the page, so like a form. Uh, so we can just pass in a value on the query string um, and we'll be passing in um, the username. Briefly before we move on to that, we'll come back and have a look at our server.js file. So we'll notice that we've got a few packages here being required. So we've required our express package to give us access to routing. We've instantiated our express package. We've required the HTTP object, um, which allows us to do HTTP, handle the HTTP requests. And we've also included here on a require the FS module, which allows us to access um, functionality for the file system. Um, so I'm passing a reference of app and fs into each of these routes uh, so that they will then be able to be used in those modules and be in scope. So when we pass in app and fs, when we see this in the auth file, we would have noticed in our modules.exports, we had a function and we passed in app fs. Well, that came from here where app and fs is a reference to Express and the file system. Okay, let's go back to our auth.js file. So we've created in here a route to the API auth and we're grabbing a reference out of the query string for our username. And then we get into doing a read file. So this is our first method we're using on our FS um, object. And so we have a read file we pass it the location and name of the file. In this case, because the file is in the same directory as our server.js, 
Um, we don't need to do any relative linking. It's at the right place, so we just need to pass the name. There's an optional value here we can pass through, an optional set of options. Um, this one's just telling it that the file format to expect is a UTF-8 file. Um, and then the uh, last parameter here is a callback function. Um, in this case, the function, the um, the way we've set out this is with using an anonymous function. We could just as easily um, use this code, which uses the arrow function to do the same thing. So that and the line above are essentially equivalent. Okay, so if we had an error uh, while we're trying to read the file, we want to send an error message out so we know what's happening. And we would send a response back to the client saying that we did not succeed. The data that comes from our JSON file is essentially text. So what we want to do is to convert that string of text into an actual JSON object so that we can then use the dot, the object dot notation to be able to loop through it and do our checking. So we use this function, which is a json.parse. So that will take a text version of the JSON data and convert it into an actual um, JSON object, which we can then use to loop over. And here comparing the username that we got from the query string with the names, remembering our auth data, each one was a key of name. So comparing the the query string with the names. If we get a match, then we send back to our client um, the username. And this is optional, you send back whatever whatever you like. But in this case, we're sending back the username and that the, that the success was true. And then we get out of this particular function. Um, we could go and keep looping for the entire set of the for loop, but it seemed uh, wasteful that once you've got one hit, we may as well drop out because we've got some success. So if we had looped all the way through this for loop and found no matches, then we would also want to send back to the client um, that we did not succeed. So this is an example of the read file method, um, being able to read a file um, so next we'll have a look at being able to write a file. So in that we'll look at now register uh, route. So this route we're using once again the get method on the slash API reg route. Once again we're passing in the express app and file system objects. We're going to once again grab the username from the query string and at first we're going to read exactly the same as we did on the last one. And we're going to loop over the data, checking to see whether the name that we want to add to this list already exists. So if it already exists, um, it would say is user is equal to one if we get a match. So if user is greater than zero, meaning we have a match, then we send back a message of just that the success was false we could send back whatever properties we need to. Um, or else, meaning we don't have that user in there, this is a new user, we can create a new object um, with that username and push that onto our object. So our object up here, we read the file and we JSON parsed that into a JSON object, into this user object. We're now gonna add one more onto the end of that object. But now we want to write that information back out to the file. So what we're going to do is use the JSON stringify method on our object to create a string rather than a JSON object. So we've got these two functions here, JSON parse and JSON stringify to convert it into a JSON object or to convert it back into a string. So now that we have this string that we want to write out, we can use the write file method, giving it the 
file we want to write to, the data that we want to write to that file. The write file method basically totally overwrites um, everything that was in there. And that's fine for our purpose here in that we first got all the data out. We've added a little bit onto it and then we're going to write the whole lot back. We have a um, an optional set of options here. Once again, telling it the file is in UTF-8 format and then a callback function. Um, so remembering both these read and write are asynchronous actions that we say go and read it, but by, we have no idea about how long it will take for the server to actually go off, open that file and read it and give us back the data. So these callback functions are being used for that asynchronous nature. So as long as we didn't have an error in the write, we will send back to the user um, that it was successfully done, that we've added this new name um, and what the name was. So let's have a look at these things actually working in a browser. Okay, so here we are in a browser and we've gone to localhost 3000, which is our default port uh, for our node server. We've got no default routes for this, so we get cannot get because there is no route for that. So remember our first route was on the API slash auth route. And we will pass through a username and equal to Alan. So remember if we had a look at our auth data file, one of our users here had the name of Alan. So what should happen? This is the, the login option. So if those names match, we should come back with a response, which is going to tell us what the name of the user was and that it was a success. If we tried and put in any other name into there, we should come back with what the name was and that the success was false. We can now do the same sort of test, but on our registration route. So if we type in our route, which was reg and our username uh, was equal to, and let's pick a name that's not in the list. So let's just do a Paul. Then we can see our username was Paul, it was a success, and you can see how it's been added to the end of our file. If we tried to do a registration to a name that already existed, remember we did a read and we wanted to test um, if someone existed and if they did, we would send back a success or false. So if we do this, we come back and we say a success was false. So that's the usage of the um, base, some basic usage of the node file system. Um, if you're looking for more information and there is a lot more to do with the file system, check out the node documentation page. Um, there is a, a ton of information in here, uh, probably more than you want, um, on things that you can do with the file system. Um, so have a browse at that. For um, what you're looking for at the moment, you're probably looking at that read and write um, will meet your needs for the moment. Okay, we'll see you in another video.